thank you for having this conversation with me. I know that a lot of people will definitely, you know, enjoy uh, learning more about you, your practice, and about the works. So that's amazing. No problem. Thank you for having me. And thank you for the invitation as well. Yes, yes. So um, I want this conversation to be, you know, very, very, very natural, very candid. Um, I, I want people to, you know, uh, be able to hear from you in your own words about the project. Uh, I know this is something that started um, earlier and that you are planning to maybe, you know, complete this series. But of course, we're going to uh, learn all of that uh, shortly. But before uh, we continue, I just uh, want to acknowledge that um, I know that giving thanks and respect uh, and honoring the land uh, and ancestors is and continues to be a common practice within indigenous communities and showing appreciation and giving thanks uh, has a long history on these lands. And today I want to add myself uh, to this practice as a gesture of respect and reconciliation. And I want to acknowledge that uh, the land uh, that the exhibition is uh, up uh, today is the meeting um, is the meeting on uh, is that it, is it's part of the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Meri. Uh, the, meeting, the meeting place of Etobicoke is still home to many indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. And I am very grateful to have the opportunity as an immigrant to this land to work and present uh, here. Uh, I also want to invite people to take a moment to reflect on how you came to call Canada home and to think about how maybe you and your family came to share the life and the prosperity of this land. And this comes from, from an important understanding that we are all related and uh, connected, including, you know, our connections with animated and inanimated beings who sustain and um, provide all that we need for life. And in a more personal note, I also want to acknowledge that I was born in the traditional territory of the Muiscas and Chipchas, who named originally Bacata, the land that we know today as Bogota in Colombia. And this uh, um, whole, you know, acknowledgement is also something that I would like to um, know, let people know that uh, it's part of a learning and understanding also um, of, you know, colonialism and many oppressive systems that has had been, um, you know, present and that they continue to be present in the land uh, where I was born. So I, I wanted to say that before we continue. Uh, Anything that you want to add before we start like this conversation now? That was a great acknowledgement. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, no, thank you. And I guess uh, first things first, and I would like if it's possible for you to, you know, introduce yourself and your art practice, and specifically if you can speak to the storytelling nature of your work. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to introduce myself in the language as is customary. The language I'm going to be speaking is Anishinaabe Bonwin, and I'll do my best to um, transcribe into English after. Uh, my, um, my name to creation, what my first family and what the ancestors know me by is Whistling Eagle, which can say Migize. I go by Migize for short, which is a bald eagle. I am uh, with the Little People Clan. The little ones are my ancestors. And I am traditionally from uh, Nea Shignigming, also known as the point of land surrounded by water on three sides. We know it as the beautiful place. And I am also, I guess I call Toronto uh, home as well, or Toronto. 
I moved off reserve off my reserve the trip was an AWASH um, probably when I was about 15 uh, down to Toronto to kind of just finish high school and I've kind of been situated here ever since I go home a lot um, a lot of my family's still up there and I go back up there just to reconnect with my community with with the land with the water with the air and I am really privileged because I come from a traditional storytelling uh, family and a lot of the a lot of the stories and the teachings that were passed to me were from uh, were handed to me or were passed down to me from my great grandmother Verna Verna Najwan, Verna Johnston, as well as Basil Johnston. He was another um, traditional storyteller and author, and I got to um, I got to learn from both of them at a at a young age, and I'm very fortunate to be able to carry those teachings and to and to pass them on to the next generations. I am, I guess, what people call uh, a helper in the community. Um, the tr the word for that is Ashka Bewis, a traditional helper. I've been involved in the ceremony community uh, since I was a, since I was young as well, um, just helping with with various um, with various ceremonies. Uh, go on medicine picks, uh, uh, so I pick traditional medicines for traditional healers as well, as well as for my family. And I guess I'm also a painter. Um, I like to call myself a visual storyteller um, with the paintings, and I guess the main themes of my paintings are are, are the Anishinaabe traditional stories and just trying to you know relearn them myself reclaim them and also carry them forward for the next generations of um you know of of youth and 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 community members that are that are asking for these teachings and for these stories it's a little bit about me yeah that's wonderful i mean i know it's in, like it's hard to condense in such a you know short amount of time like who we are and what we do but i think you did a great job and yeah no and i'm glad i know that you're very busy you have a lot of projects going on which is great but i'm glad that you're able to also go back home and as you said to you know reconnect and um i think that that's awesome um now moving on to the works that we're gonna see and that we're seeing today in the exhibition um can you describe a little bit about the tarot card uh series and where did this come from and what was going in your mind when you started this series that's a big one actually <laughs> i wasn't um planning on doing the the tarot card series but um a really close friend of mine his name is joey styles or joseph marlin he is um a musician from out west but um, he had this project and he wanted me to produce three tarot cards for the project and i accepted it and then it it basically opened up this whole new journey into the uh, into the tarot card series and i've always been fascinated by by the tarot cards since i was since i was really young i've been um, my mother was a or is a librarian up on my um, first nations so I spent a lot of time in the libraries growing up and always drawn to different, uh, I guess, mythologies and different creation stories from around the world. And I was always very fascinated by, by I guess, Egyptian um, history and mythology and iconography, because within Egyptian iconography, I see a lot of my own culture kind of represented within that, um, that being Anishinaabe pictographs. And um, I, in, in the tarot card series, you see that I actually use quite a bit of um, pictography. Mm -hmm. And so it was a it was a wonderful opportunity to kind of revisit that passion and infuse my own iconography, Anishinaabe iconography into it. And just looking at all the parallels between, I guess, those Egyptian creation stories and my own creation stories and my own art, our Anishinaabe art forms and iconography. You know, growing up in a library, doing a lot of research, and I guess the common belief is that um, the first tarot card series came from Italy around the 1500s. And that's kind of where I was, that's, those are the images that I was using that I, as a base to kind of go off of, but a lot of those, um, a lot, I guess, a lot of those 
images actually came from Egypt. You know, kind of, it was like a reclamation of those traditional images and stories by, by infusing it with my own, I guess, Anishinaabe worldview. Yeah, I really like the way that you are combining these elements and, uh, you know, uh, looking at also, yeah, like other representations and iconographies and having this, you know, uh, connection and conversation with your own. I think that it's, it's fascinating. And uh, one of the like themes and elements that this exhibition Lighting Souls uh, is speaking, uh, it's to the natural elements. Right? and in relation to the fluid and shifting characteristics of identity, belonging, and home across and between races, regions, cultures, and nations. So I think that is very interesting to see uh, how you are creating uh, these connections. And also, I would like to know uh, how you see the Tarot series speaking to this curatorial concept. Uh, also keeping in mind that the elements that we are uh, exploring in this exhibition are the air and the fire, right? No, I love, and I love um, drawing upon those two because we have many teachings about the air and about the fire and the water and, and the natural, I guess, the natural elements. And one of the things that I really love to bring forward is the concept of the first family and the first family being creation all around us. First family being that that air, that wind, that fire, that rock, that, that water, and, and the stories and the teachings and the history that, that, that they have and bringing those forward in, you know, in, in, a, in a nice, gentle, in a gentle way. And just, I guess, creating a sense of awareness that, that you know, it, it's our duty to, to steward the land and and to protect and preserve it and to share their their stories so that so the next generation can you know can benefit from that as well um with that with that fire it there's so many different teachings and representations of, of what that fire does for us and and how sacred that fire is and and i guess it's our it's our duty to to protect those stories and those teachings and and carry them forward so the so you know so the next generation can learn as well and that in that air how important that is like it's such a gift that we can sit here and even within our conversation i don't even know how many breaths we took you know and it's it's such a gift that how creation works tirelessly for us every day all day you know so it's just you know, so it's our it's our duty and responsibility to, you know, to not only acknowledge that, but but to but to steward it and and share its stories as well. Yeah, no, that's that's great because when I was thinking about the the curatorial concept for this exhibition, and I was of course going through uh, like the all the natural elements, but for me the air and fire are you know uh, something that it's very close to uh, this powerful force of creation right uh, it, it's about transformation it's about creation it's about uh, even giving birth and at the same time about healing because i have been also reading a lot about how fire as well can have this healing uh, uh, effect right uh, in us and also uh, in nature, within the animals, within the ecosystem. So it's it's interesting to see that this is something that is very close to you, is very close to uh, uh, many of the teachings and beliefs that you want to uh, carry on and to continue to share with, with new generations. Um, also, uh i wanted to know and because from what i have understand about these uh cards in this series these are the three like first three cards and do you have any plans to produce the whole deck or just the mayor arcana what are your thoughts about that i know that this started and it was produced uh, a year ahead but where are you right now at with this uh, series i do actually um want to finish the arcana major um but i'm kind of taking my time with it. it it's to me it's really a journey it's a journey of rediscovery of 
of, of passion. Um, and it's, you know, and it's not something that I'm rushing because there's so much, there's so much learning and relearning that has to be done as, you know, when I sit and, and I, and I paint these, these, these images. Um, right now I have three completed, but I'm also working a little sneak peek. I'm working on the fourth one right now. Yeah. That's wonderful. Oh, wow. So there's a lot going on, but I've been working for about a year now. And it's, you know, it, it's a journey of, it's a journey for me. And I don't want to, I don't want to rush it. Um, because I'm also infusing a lot of my own stories into it. Um, this is the Empress card that I'm working on, but even within this one, it's actually kind of like a self-portrait. I can see that. I was going to ask about the face of it because it's very, yeah, I can see now that it's a self-portrait. But um, what this one's talking to is um, actually um, my experience within the um, Indian day schools. I was, uh, I attended an Indian day school from uh, grade, from grade one up until uh, my school's closure in grade six. So this is actually a picture of me in grade five when I was attending one of the day schools. Okay. One of the Indian day schools. And it's talking a lot about some tough issues that I had to overcome in, you know, in my journey. Um, that being just everything that I was seeing around the reserve and in those schools and kind of my battle with, I guess, with suicide and different things like that. So it's really, it's a, it's a healing journey for me as well. And that's why I really don't wanna rush the, these tarot cards because I'm exploring my own story. It's kind of a form of, I guess, like art as medicine or art as therapy for myself. So, you know, I'm not, I can say I'm gonna be doing, you know, the, the, the whole deck, but even if it takes me the, my lifetime, then I'm okay with that because to me, it's, it really is a journey. And it's one that I wanna respect and I wanna do in a good way. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not rushing it. There's like, even within the three tarot cards that are exhibiting, I've hidden so much imagery and storytelling and storytelling points within them. Um, and it's the same with this one. I wish I could, I wish I had a better camera, but there's, there's so much going on. Yeah, no, I like I can see in this one and also in the other ones, like there's so much detail that you put into this. And, yeah. and it's great that we can have like a sneak peek of this uh, work in progress. I, I love it. And thank you for sharing. I wanted to ask you this for, for a long time, because I have been seeing, you know, your work and and I see that there's a like a graffiti style also very much present in your work and I like the way that you are combining that uh, with you know traditional picture wraps and uh, of course the teachings and all these symbols uh, and I wonder like if you want to share a little bit about that you know uh, style that you are combining because I find it very very unique um, I guess it's just, I, I paint what I see and I do have a background, I guess, in what people call graffiti, but like even, I like to call myself more of a contemporary Anishinaabe rock painter. Um, I'm a mural artist and it's amazing because now we have all these new mediums available to us to, to, to tell our stories. And I guess I, I laugh sometimes when I'm doing a mural because I'm painting on rocks, on buildings and different things like that. And I'm painting our stories, our beliefs, our traditions. And, and I think back, I'm like, wow, you know, the Anishinaabe have a, have a long legacy of, of rock painting around the Great Lakes regions with, with photography. And it's just a, a way that I get to, that I get to do that to honor my ancestors and to carry that, that medium and that, I guess, that um, method of, of storytelling and bring it into bring it into the contemporary. So I love, you know, I love using aerosol mediums and and applying that to traditional, I guess, photography and and storytelling. Yeah, uh, that was immediately one of the things that I really find like very unique uh, 
uh, of your work and it's like that combination do you think that maybe that style is also something that could you know be appealing to younger generations and to people that you know of course are drawn to this style and in the end they are also you know learning and having you know this engagement with uh, traditional you know knowledge pictography and image viewing it's been quite the journey it's taken me my whole life to kind of figure out this i guess the style and you know it's something it's something that i it's something that i really struggled with when earlier on in my painting career it was just like how do i bring my own voice forward how can i make this unique how you know we have a long we have a history of woodland painting east or ojibwe woodland painting and you know that was my basis when i was younger was was being a woodland painter but there came a point when i was like how can i take everything that i've learned and and apply that to to create something a little bit more to create something unique that is that is i don't want to call it my style but you know that that that's a little bit different you know, and there's there's a lot of amazing artists out there, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to be copycatting Morriso, Norval Morriso the whole time. I wanted to, to to learn, but also push the medium forward, bring woodland, or not bring woodland, but I guess put my voice in it. Yeah. And and I think, you know, now when people see my work, they'll they actually know they're like, okay, like I know this as Migize, I know this as Nile. Um, which which is amazing, oh, yeah. and which I'm very grateful for because it's it's been quite the journey, you know, to 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 find my own style and voice within that, and still being, you know, still being true to to the I guess to the legacy of woodland painters and Anishinaabe um, pictograph um, pictography. Yeah. No, certainly, I definitely think that. Uh, it's it's a tough one for for any artist to find their own voice, their style, and to be able to convey with materials with uh, all these elements like their own voice. And mm -hmm. I I I think that it's uh, you have a very strong you know presence. It's it's there and and it's yeah for me at least it's something that I can uh, easily identify as okay. I know this is Nile. I know this is uh, his work, and and I really like it. I, I I think it really brings something very fresh every time, and and it's exciting. I also wanted to ask you about the 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 three works that we have in this exhibition. We have the Magician, the Fool, and the Emperor. And uh, the Fool is one of my favorites. I think it this the character itself. It's it's fun. There's some duality in the fool, right? Like uh, uh, there's a lot of symbolism already uh, uh, in our own, you know, uh, collective uh, memory, if you can say so. Uh, but I wanted to know a little bit more about specifically uh, this character and what were your thoughts when you were creating this. And I know there are a lot of details, like. Of course, the uh, in the clothing and even in the elements that are, you know, uh, on top and behind this character. So I don't know if there's anything that you want to uh, point out or share about uh, this one. The the fool is actually one of my favorites as well. It's it's I like to think of it's almost a representation of myself that you know that vagabond kind of heading towards that pre precipice, but having so much faith in creation that it has that it it's looking that even as it, as it approaches that precipice that it 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 gives itself fully and is looking up to creation um it kind of reminds me of my own journey you know regardless of all the the obstacles that i was facing you know and and all the hardship that i had to go through at, at, a, at a young age um that i would still find that that love and beauty within creation to kind of to kind of give myself up to that um there's like i don't even know where to start with the with the fool um that image above the fool i guess would be it's it's almost like the wheel of fortune or the representation of creator 
and the, how creator is we're all connected to the creator and and that creator will you know we are a beautiful gift of creation and we just have to put that faith and that love in, into, into creation itself and it will take care of us um but i also did a couple of things to kind of to, to kind of reclaim the 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 image like in the the bag that the that the fool is carrying instead of a european rose i actually put in an ojibwe wild rose um if you look into the clothing of the fool you'll see a lot of pictographs within it there's images of ancestors in a canoe in the legs there are there's an image of um nanobojo the original being and kind of when i'm taking those steps that i that i'm connected to you know to those um that i'm connected to those stories and i'm connected to those beings um even that that dog i actually um i flipped it into a white wolf and put some woodland elements into it and the wolf carries many teachings of of humility and companionship um so i was so it's kind of like i'm bringing my own teachings my own teachings with me as i approach that as i approach that precipice um at the bottom there there you see the moon and that moon rep is a representation of that water and in the other corner is that is that sun which is the representation of of that of that fire and you know everything and even to the colors that i use into the background they all have they all carry teachings and they all carry what i like to call medicine they're they're healing colors to me um and the foliage that i used in the background as well those are traditional medicines i used white pine which carries a lot of teachings and a lot of teachings of protection and of home i used um, a lot of cedar which is a representation of that water or of that grandmother and how grandmother will the grandmother is always watching out for us you know so it's there's a lot going on <laughs> A lot of different styles. There's a lot of different styles that I fused in there, not only woodland and Anishinaabe uh, pictography, but also within the face. Um, I use like more impressionistic styles mm -hmm. and classical. I guess what people call like classical European styles of painting. So even within within that face, you know, I used impressionism a little bit, a little bit of realism. I used pointillism within the clothing and. I just, I don't know, I had, and tried to, tried to have fun with it as well, and not struggle. Um, but there's, like, even within that moon, too, if you look, there's so much double imagery, there's figures of the ancestors in the canoe. And, and you'll see the cedar within within the moon as well, that that moon represents that water. And that that cedar represents that water and that grandmother that sacred feminine as well so there's a lot of different things that i'm using in there yeah no it's wonderful it's it's such a privilege to be able to listen to you and look at the work and understand better like the elements and where is this coming from and it's such a powerful uh yeah imagery that you're seeing and i can see you know all the time and dedication that you has you have put into this and um it's wonderful i i really hope that in your within your own journey you find you know moments in which you will be completing uh, like other uh characters from you know the mirror i can as well because i think they they offer a lot and i think is 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 it's interesting for people and also I want to mention that most of the artists that I uh, usually work with uh, come from you know different backgrounds and they are most of them uh, I'll say immigrants as myself mm -hmm. and uh, for me it's very important to to be able to have moments in which other cultures can find you know these spaces to to yeah to to live together so when i see your work and when i see 
elements that you're bringing from other cultures or from other moments in time and history and they are all you know now living together in in your work uh i find something very you know positive and optimistic about about the future and about the world and about how we can we can live together and we can acknowledge our differences uh but we can we can we can find ways to create something as beautiful as what you have done without you know uh without the fight without the hate without uh you know the oppression that unfortunately um well has been present and it still is and uh other artists from other backgrounds for sure will be very interested in you know uh having these opportunities of of learning more about uh, traditional uh knowledge about uh, indigenous artists as yourself and that's something that i hope that people you know can take away from 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 looking at your work and uh, from having this experience uh, at the show so i'm truly honored to be able to have this uh, as part of the exhibition and people you know we think they're going to be able to find those connections within the works within the concept and also uh, to think about the land that we're in right uh, what what home means for everyone and how we truly need to take care of our land and i think it's wonderful and take care of one another regardless of where we come from in the world the, the way that i was taught is that we're all part of that first family and and we have such a duty and responsibility to to look after the first family as i mentioned before like the first family gives to us and nurtures us tirelessly every day so it's so important the way i was taught is how we teach one another is how we is is our sorry how we how we treat one another is how we treat the, the world around us and it, it's a fine line especially when I was working on the tarot card series, I didn't want to appropriate. Mm -hmm. so I wanted to, to, to use it as a, as a way to, to infuse it with my own storytelling and my own culture and my own learning. And I guess our, our creation stories hold universal truths of, of, of love and understanding and compassion. And that's what I really wanted to bring forward with the with the series and just i don't know push my own learning forward you know and share that with the broader world as well you know and our responsibility to take care of that wind to take care of that fire to take care of that water to take care of that rock to take care of of, of the world and and steward an environment where those where the next generation can come in and they feel nurtured and loved um you know the, the, those babies that have yet to come into this world you know they're going to need they're going to need an environment of, of love and and of compassion you know so if you know that's that's the story that i really want to bring forward that's especially wonderful. and especially with the tarot card series like a lot of those you know those those italian I guess some um, knowledge keepers they they went to Alexandria and they were learning in Egypt and Egypt has always Egyptian mythology has always fascinated me so much because their creation stories are so in line with our create the Anishinaabe creation stories the world being born out of a flood and I can see a lot of my own iconography within within I guess Egyptian hieroglyphs and and I just and I just love that it fascinates me because no matter where we come from on this world, we 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 have these stories, creation stories that are similar. And for me, that that really just shows, you know, how we are, you know, first and foremost children of the earth, and how we really need to 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 nurture and to care for that first mother of creation, that being the earth. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. We we need to continue to find those moments where we can hold each other, where we can spread love and actually 
be able to you know have what you just said i'm just echoing your your words about compassion about kindness about uh we need that so much like as a community we need that so much as you know personally everyone goes through different circumstances in life and and it's not always easy and we we have each other and we need to know that and we know to know that uh, the land itself is also for us holding us and 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 giving us so much that we we need to we need to remember that in in everything that we're doing and for me personally this exhibition this series has been a lot to uh, be with you know understanding uh, where I am and understanding where I come from understanding uh, that I just you know uh, had uh, a baby and that um, um, I want to, I want her and for also other generations to to have you know a place that they can enjoy uh, and have moments and teachings that they are gonna be passed on to them and they are gonna feel that they are not alone, that they are, you know, supported from, from, you know, from ancestors, and, 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 and it's been a journey also as myself. That's why I, um, uh, getting to know you, having these conversations, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's it's priceless, and I'm glad that, um artists from you know the exhibition and visitors that will come to the show will be able to um, you know think about that think about home think about the land and see how the works are you know so inspiring uh, such as yours so thanks again Niall I, I I'm truly honored like I want to keep on you know uh, following and see what's you want to share a little bit about what's uh, coming up for you? I know that you're doing a lot of stuff. A lot of different projects. I'm going to be finishing the tarot card, um, this next tarot card, as well as have a couple of different murals coming up this summer as well. But another aspect of my work is um, community work. Um, also, uh, my partner is executive director of an organization that works with indigenous um, youth from across Canada. Um, with ment um, addressing, I guess, mental health and and suicide. And so, you know, I want to be able to to help out with the organization. We're planning some summer camps with um, with some cultural activities as as well as well, there's lots. <laughs> so well, that's that's a lot already. <laughs> that's a lot already. And yeah. Um... You have been very, very much involved. I know that you had a program uh, with schools, uh, uh, also, you know, doing like virtual teachings and yep. all that. And I think it's wonderful. I, I love the whole set. Uh, the, the, you're still doing that uh, or that was that's an ongoing project as well? Ongoing project. Yeah. Ongoing it's project. It's yeah. Like I said, my all my teachers always say you don't run up a mountain. So I'm just taking my time with it. You know, and the 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 Empress card that I just showed you earlier, you know, it's a it's a heavy story. It's a part of my story. So, you know, I'm I'm making sure that I'm in a good place when I when I paint it and that I'm okay. Um, you know, and it, it's helping me on my own healing journey as well. So it's definitely something I don't want to rush. For sure. Yeah. Well, wonderful, Niall. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, like, I'm completely, you know, uh, satisfied with this conversation. I think that it gives something very interesting for people to, you know, uh, see and learn more about the works. And, of course, we're going to be uh, shortly uh, in installation mode and I know you have the support from Nigel and Amana which yeah. they have been great and I'm glad that you have their support because I know that for artists sometimes dealing with all the you know 
administration and details and content. Sometimes you, I prefer, and I'm, and I say this to artists very often, like if you have that possibility, your energy is gonna go towards what you really want, which is creating your work. And they have been amazing and very, very supportive in this whole process. So I'm glad that you're in good hands uh, with them. No, I'm very, great, very grateful for them. Yeah, and yeah, no, of course I will keep you posted along the whole process. Uh, I'll be sharing renders, renderings and all that. And yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about this because I'm trying and we're doing our best to have a very, very like powerful and striking um, um, uh, like layout and exhibition design. So of course we're going to, you know, uh, be able to echo the, the powerful work that you have. And that's, that's my goal. That's what I want. I want people Amazing. to have the opportunity to enjoy. And because we are in a hub, we are in a community space. It's wonderful because you can't imagine how many people like the food print that we have is amazing people coming every day it's different it's different from a you know a traditional gallery space where not everyone gets to get there uh, we are in a mall and people come from you know different backgrounds and for from different reasons and the engagement that artists have had um, um, with uh, visitors has been amazing and i hope that when you find time and and you're able to come um, you're gonna see people are excited and and that's something that i have enjoyed very much about about this this project to be able to be outside traditional spaces and decentralizing art and bringing people and to communities art right there next to you know their home and they can find moments of engaging with this work when they thought that they were going to do, you know, groceries and things like that. So yeah. I like it. I think it's, it's really accessible. It's what public art should be like. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I can't wait to come and see the space and check out the exhibition as well. I'm really excited yeah. about it. For sure. For sure. I look forward to it. And uh, yeah, from the bottom of my heart, thank you.